up YouTube? It's your boy Mr. B from Backyard Barbecue. And today I have whipped out Big Bertha. Uh, ask me why? Uh, I'm gonna cook a uh, pulled pork today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is in this particular video, I'm gonna show you how to maintain tips on the Shirley Fab. A lot of people have uh, hit me up in, in, in recent uh, comments or, or via my email address which I'll actually put down here again if you want to contact me in reference to my uh, Shirley Fabrication Smoker. Um, reference to how to maintain, well, not even how to maintain the tips, but how are the tips on from side to side? You know, when you buy grills, uh, the cheap versions, when I say cheap, I'm talking about anything of roughly $500 and below, the beginner level. Um, they don't usually maintain the tips from the left to the right side of it, depending on what it is. Um, char broilers, things like that. You have to modify them, spend more money to try to get it to do even temps, and then the smoker won't last that long. It may last you three to five years unless you keep it inside or something like that. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to, not even how to, but how my Shirley Fab maintains temps from side to side. So, I'm going to show you real quick what I'm doing just to start up my fire. Uh, hold on, using my tripod here. Uh, you can see I got my burner here my propane burner no more putting paper on in my chimney I got a little, little back, uh, metal pan just so uh, when I light it up you know I don't burn my concrete and nothing like that and I got a load of charcoal here let me show you something else real quick inside I don't know if you can see but I got a bed of charcoal here that I'm using and that's just to get me a good fire going instead of me just sitting there with a propane tank you know waiting on the, uh, the fire to start or whatnot, uh, or waiting for the wood to, to catch fire. Because sometimes, if you don't know, sometimes you get green wood. They'll sell you some wood telling you it's been dry for six months. But the reality of it is that some people just cut wood down, put it out for maybe a month or so, and claim it's dry. But you'll know dry wood because as soon as you put it on it, if it doesn't catch fire, you know it's got some, some uh, water still in it. Or if you put it on the fire and you see sizzling, you'll see water coming out of the wood. That lets you know it's not completely dry. Uh, dry wood takes about six months to a year to actually completely dry out. Um, that's if it's in optimal con conditions, like people stack it up off the ground because uh, you know moisture's in the ground when it rains and stuff like that. And they cover it up so that the water doesn't just sit in the, sit in the wood when it rains. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and light this up. I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you uh, how I pour the charcoal into my, uh, uh, whatever you want to call that, my little uh, fire pan or whatever. Um, that slides into the, the Shirley Fab, and then we'll go from there. And then I'll show you the temps as I uh, as we go along, and I'll just give you time-wise from the time I actually pour it in. I'll probably do a little clock or something and give you how long it takes my Shirley Fab to come up the temps. And uh, really, if you really want to cook, you can cook in 30 minutes. But I usually let mine sit around 45 minutes to an hour to come up the temps because if uh, if you don't know about these smokers. Let me show you this real quick. This right here, if you get one and you on the fence about getting these dampers, get them. That controls your fire. I, like even the uh, chimney up here, as you can see, it opens and closes. Um, you can I can direct my temperature, make it go down. I can direct it by opening and throttling them back. These are uh, dampers, so that is a must if you get one of these. I mean, it's a little bit more to get uh, that second damper. The first one's gonna come with it, but to get that second one's a little bit more. Um, but in my opinion, it is well worth it. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, what's up YouTube? This your boy, Mr. B. We back. Uh, the chimney is lit. Let me see if I can get you a close-up on that. Well, hold on. You see that flag flying right there? I need them to win so we can go to the SEC Championship. Today they play in South Carolina. But anyway, uh, here's the chimney. It is lit. I don't know if you can see the fire coming up or whatnot. Um, but I don't play with fire like that, so I ain't gonna bring it up to the screen. I'm about to introduce it to the, uh, to whatever you want to call this or whatnot. And like I said, I already got a bed of coal in there. I'm gonna pour it in there. And then take one of these. Call that the stoker, right? Let me move this out the way so you can see what I do. So I just use it and stick it in, lift it up, and push it in all the way. All right, I'm gonna close this, open it all the way up, right? Cause I want it to breathe. 
about 10 to 15 minutes. Then let me turn this so you can see this. Like I said, my dampers, I'm not gonna open this one up. I'm gonna open this one up. What's the difference? This one, if I open it up, my heat goes up to, let me show you this a little bit, so you can see that. All right, so when I open that one up, my heat goes straight from the firebox all the way out of that smokestack. That's not what I'm doing because I'm cooking meat over here, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna close this one because I want my heat to go, it's a reverse flow, and it goes all the way to the end, there's a metal plate in there, and then the heat comes out of the back end and then comes back, right? I can close this off like it is now, close this one as well and my heat would just come out of here um but no i like it to come out of here because i may decide to put something on like some hot dogs or something so i'm gonna open this damper which goes to the warmer box and i'm gonna open this damper which allows the heat to come from the smoke pit into the warmer so i'm gonna open that one all the way and that's just to build up my temps right so let me take you over here show you where my temps at right now i'm gonna start my clock on my handy dandy eye touch here. And I'm gonna hit start on it. I don't know if you can close up of that. Stopwatch. And I'm gonna you, show you when it actually gets to the temps right now at about 100. And the other one, roughly about 100, right? So I'm gonna show you, show you those temps uh, and how long it takes. Like I said, 19 seconds. 21 whatnot and I'm just gonna let that run till my temps get up just give you an idea of how long it takes me to warm this up oh something else I, I put out here just for you to see um, my driveway is like on like a hill or whatnot so I don't know if you can see the level I put a level out here just so you can see that this my smoker is actually level and when well, you see my fire, my uh, Cajun fryer if you if you happen to care and then I got it on a piece of wood angled up and then I got to stop behind my wheels just so it don't roll off into the road or anything. But that's where we at. Oh, man. About to fall over on this thing. But anyway, that's where we at. Uh, I'll be back shortly. Um, hopefully, it takes me about, like I said, average no more than 45 minutes to get this thing up the temp before I actually put meat on there. Because I want, I don't wait for it as soon as it hit 300 put meat on there because I want to dial my dampers down. I close this a little bit just to get my temps exactly right. Another thing I did, I put another tail true back here. I don't know if you can see that, it's a little, little smoky. I'll clean it off here in a minute. It's at 100. So I'll show you the temps on all three of them uh, once it gets up to optimal cooking conditions, like I said. So we'll be back in a little bit and, uh, and I'll show you those temps. So be back in a minute. All right, we're back YouTube. And this is crazy, man. Uh, right after I shut the video off, I put three pieces of wood on here uh, let me show you real quick just so you can see it I don't know if you can see it three pieces of wood in there and I'm gonna show you the time right here um once you get a look at that 15 minutes almost 16 minutes and I hooked up my ready check See what that says? 307 degrees inside. I want you to look at these tail trues. Uh, getting close to 300. And you see that? That's maybe 280. And if you want to know how even this thing cook, that's almost about the same. Identical. All right? And that's from left to right on a 24 by 60. So at 15 minutes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throttle back. Let me bring this over here. I'm gonna throttle this back some, uh, cause I don't want to get it too hot. Throttle it back, and that's really all I'm gonna have to do, just cause I know how to manage my fires and whatnot. So that's pretty much. It uh, gives you an idea of how soon you can cook. Man, I could probably put meat on here in the next 15 minutes, cause I want my temps to settle before I put it on there. I don't want just. I can just put the meat on there now, but I'm really rolling the dice on whether my temps gonna continue to go high, or if they fall off, cause now I just closed it. But that's pretty much how this Shirley Fab works, man. You see the temps? Oh, let me show you the uh, the warmer box just so you have an idea. You see those temps? 175. Like, I could put a piece of cheese in there and smoke some cheese right now if I wanted to. Uh, but if I was smoking cheese, I would close my damper off. Um, this damper here. 
allowing heat to come into my warmer box. I can show you right now. This warmer box, I got my hand on it. That's how thick this steel is. At a 175, not hot at all. Let's see if this. Yeah, I can't leave it on there. And this firebox is off the chain. Look at that. 300 degrees, and I got my hands on it. That's the benefit of an insulated firebox, right? So if you're interested in getting one, that's how those things work. Uh, there's a place to shoot this video and show you uh, how long it takes to pump up a grill, Shirley Fab. And let me know if you have any questions or comments, man. I might shoot a video and put it out there and give you a shout out. Shout out to Scott. You know who I will. Uh, you know who you are. Talked to you recently about a Shirley Fab. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, that's anybody. Shoot me an email. Post it below. And then we'll go from there, man. Holla. Hey, one last thing before I go, YouTube. Um, talking about temps on this grill, the Shirley Fabrication smoke, my bad. Reverse flow at that. Um, I'm going to show you these temps over here. Um, see if we can get a close-up real quick. People have been asking me how well they uh, maintain temps from each side. Uh, let's see here. A little bit above 250 on the left side. And guess what we got over here, y'all, on the right side. Uh, let me see if I can get a close-up. Same thing, a little bit above 250. So long story short, uh, these smokers are, are, are well-built. I have done zero modifications whatsoever. No, I don't put water in the bottom, or I don't have water in the bottom trying to, uh, you know, make, I ain't moisten my meat, none of that. Just fire it up as you've seen earlier in the video, and letting it go. Everything is based off of you tweaking and throttling your uh, smokestack and your damper. So pretty much that's it, man. It's been about three hours. Actually, let me see. Three hours and 37 minutes, if you're curious on how long um, I've been going with, that, with the smoke going. And the rest is history, man. Uh, if you got any questions, one thing on this though, right? So when you buy no smokers, I call them the, the low end smokers. Anything about uh, below five hundred dollars, Home Depot lows. Outside of Weber products, man. Um, just because I, I use them uh, every week, pretty much, so I can speak on those. But the Troy Broiler, all of those. Uh, I got a video I'ma post. My very first uh, Smoky uh, Smoky Mountain Weber, long time ago. It's funny actually because uh, I actually got some other grills on there. You'll see the char broiler. You'll see uh, had a gas grill with the half and half, one, one with charcoal and uh, uh, half charcoal, half gas, three burner. So I done had a lot of equipment. I mean, it's not just me talking. I actually will show you just so you all uh, know what I'm talking about. Not just me just talking to you. I actually like to show you. So uh, that video will be coming in, in the near future. Maybe sometime around December, depending on uh, when I have time to post it. Because it's about 24 minutes, so I need to edit that one. But anyway, um, yeah, talking about like char broilers, man, where you got a firebox. Uh, let me show you, just so uh, give it, get an idea of what I'm talking about. When you got a firebox, uh, let me go down a little bit more. Yeah, well, you got a firebox, you know, here on them char broilers, and the heat comes directly in because it's not a reverse flow. <laughs> Excuse me. It's not a reverse flow. Come up a little bit so you can see me. Uh, it's not a reverse flow, so any meat you put on this side, directly on this side of it, um, cooks pretty fast. That's my cooler falling over. Cooks pretty fast, about 300 degrees. And then um, anything you put on the far far side, the left side of your grill or the opposite side of your firebox is about 150 degrees. So you have to do modifications. You can actually Google that if you got a, a, a a char griller with the firebox on the side. You can modify that one. I've done that. I've actually sanded it down and uh, cleaned it out. Came back with high temp paint to preserve it every once a season. Then I re-season it. We talk about how you season a grill every year uh, in another video. Um, but yeah, that's what you get when you spend a small amount of money. Love the grill though, so I'm not downplaying it whatsoever. If you got one, kudos man. That thing cook up some awesome meat. You just got to tend to it a little bit more than I would something like this. So I can go enjoy the family, uh, whatnot, and then come back maybe once an hour, throw a piece of wood in there, or use my little temps. Would you see my little ready check? 
Uh, works like a champ. I can go about 300, 300 feet uh, before I start to lose the signal or become intermittent or whatnot. So, love these tools, man. People ask why you buy them and stuff like that. I never really big on them until I saw how easy it was. And it's not about being lazy. It's about uh, me being able to enjoy my gators. Win today. Go, go. Yep. One more win and it'll be LSU. And I'm off to see them in uh, Atlanta early December. Hopefully that happens. Or hopefully Tennessee, they won today. Hopefully they lose uh, one of their next two games in the SEC and make it official. But anyway, we'll see. You never know. Uh, so at the end of the day, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Holla your boy. This is Mr. B from Backyard Barbecue. Peace.